So accurate new two valve, uh, the topic is the valve design and implementation steps. So this is a, uh, this is valve from Boston Scientific and uh, recently launched in India. And uh, I think uh, this is a great valve to have, and we have several advantages of this valve uh, over the existing valves. And uh, accurate new valves, the key feature is it's basically a self-expanding valve. It's an ethanol frame with a porcine pericardial reflex. And uh, it's a supra anula valve. Again, it's very interesting. It's a supra anula valve, so it has a better hemodynamics. And uh, it's a two-step deployment, what we call as top-down deployment where uh, we deploy the upper uh, uh, crown first and then the lower uh, uh, stent opens. So it's a, it's a two-step uh, top-down deployment. And uh, the sizes are basically three sizes, which they call it as small, medium, and large. So they can treat size analysts as low as even 19 to 27 millimeters. So large analysts cannot be treated using this valve. So we look at the valve structure. The valve has uh, uh, stabilizing arches, which you can see in the top. These are stabilizing arches and also helps to uh, self-align the valve. And there are two upper crowns. You can see these two upper crowns. Basically, there's an advantage of the crown is it uh, provides an, uh, a kind of a support that captures the native leaflets. So the, the coronary leaflets, the coronary uh, leaflets are actually below these upper crown so that uh, the, the, so I mean, sorry, the, the aortic leaflets are below the upper crown, so it doesn't allow the leaflets to jump on the ostia of the coronary. So basically the leaflet, the native leaflet is kept uh, below the, uh, the crown so that it doesn't come into the ostium of the coronary. So the lower crown, uh, this is uh, the crown where we can, the, there's a protrusion into the left ventricular outflow tract. Uh, this, uh, again, this, this is so soft structure uh, that it doesn't cause any injury or uh, any uh, obstruction to the LVOT doesn't hurt the LVOT, which means the uh, pacemaker risk, even though we protrude and keep this uh, well below into the LVOT, the risk of pacemaker is extremely low. So it's got a very, very poor radial strength with a less pushing force. They have now have that accurate Neo2, they have advanced sealing technology with inner and outer pericardial skirts. Again, this has significantly contributed to reduction in paravalar leak particularly in, uh, in complex uh, anatomies. So the valve, again, have a different kind of deployment, a uh, little different, and also the loading is uh, uh, more uh, challenging for the uh, technicians to load the valve compared to the other uh, valve, which, which has two steps of uh, deployment, uh, loading in this uh, accurate Neo2. So let me start with how do we implant this valve. Uh, so basically, like uh, any other valve deployment, the first step is to get an uh, implanter's view or a coplanar view with three, all the three cusps in one plane, which we do it routinely for all for an expandable valves. So once you get a good, this also we can get an idea from the CT scan and we can modify it to even an iotogram. Once it is done, then again we pass a guide wire just like how it's similar to any other TAVI and uh, it can be in an amplitude wire or, or it can be a safari wire or your wire of choice. But we generally use a safari wire. The important step here is we know that we need to place all that we know. We place the, uh, the, uh, the curvature facing upwards. But the important thing is we should make sure the coil, the wire uh, is in, in the mid cavity or the apex, but in the mid cavity. If you keep it in the apex, then there's a possibility the wire will try to push the valve up. Whereas if you keep it very close to the LVOT, when we deploy the valve, the valve actually, the, the stent frame opens and the stent frame comes down. And uh, during that time, uh, the, if, the, if the, the wire is placed very high, there's a possibility of valve pop out. So it's important to keep the wire in the middle of the cavity. It's again uh, important. And once that is done, we put a pigtail and uh, then we do a, 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 a BAV. Uh, and balloon active plasticity is again important to make sure we do a proper balloon and balloon is made, made sure to be kept central in the, in the analyst because it needs to adequate uh, pre dilatation. Uh, one of the key aspects for accurate NEO, it is important to pre dilate. Whether you post dilate or not, pre dilatation is the most important step for accurate NEO. So we have to use a larger balloon in this case. What we generally we use a perimeter based diameter. So use the perimeter based diameter, subtract one millimeter, and that would be the balloon size. 
So a balloon should be stable, use a good pacing, and it should be fully inflated and, uh, and it should be fully deep, making sure the waste is nicely removed. So that is the first essential step uh, for a aggressive balloon dilatation using a slightly larger balloon is the first important step. This is uh, followed by the accurate, uh, again, this uh, uh, sheet, uh, this, called, uh, uh, this is the sheet valve to which uh, the valve is uh, uh, introduced. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, this is an uh, insertion aid which helps to insert the valve through this uh, eye sleeve. It's called eye sleeve, which is the uh, uh, sheath. Uh, it's a very nice sheath. We have seen very nice. Uh, sheath is uh, compared to all other sheaths. I, I feel that uh, the, this uh, sheath is the, one of the best sheaths uh, available for tally. So once uh, we insert this uh, introducer, and then you can push it three times and then push the valve through this uh, expandable sheath. So the valve goes in, and you can see uh, the valve it has a sent the balloon delivery system has a marker which you can see here, the big marker. So it's very simple. We should just place the marker at the level of the handlers. The lower part of the marker should be exactly at the, at the level of the handlers. So this is a very important step. Suppose you find the valve going up and down. If it is not very stable, then we would even suggest do a pacemaker pacing at this stage, a low slow pacing. But generally. It is not required. So if uh, then uh, once we achieve a correct position and, and making sure the pigtail is in proper position and then we go to the next step, this is the important step now. Now, uh, if it, it is important that the op first operator maintains that position, holds the valve in proper position. And if the, if the valve is too much ventricular, uh, one can pull back. But again, you should pull back too much and then push it back. The last final movement should be a push movement. That's again important. So if by, by chance, if it's too ventricular, pull it back too much into the iota and then push it back again. You can see that. So the final movement should be a push. So once that is done, if it is too high, then you can push it and just keep it at that. So making sure uh, if it is too high, then small steps, move it slowly and then making sure the, the first operator holds the valve in that proper position and the guide wire is uh, properly in the mid cavity. So the next step is the release of uh, knob one, which is uh, done by the second operator. And this is generally pacing is not required. So first we release the knob, knob one very slowly. And uh, once you release a little bit, you can see this, the upper crown uh, is released. And you can see those crowns coming out again. You can see the upper crown coming out. So this is uh, again useful. Uh, but uh, before that, I wanted to just additionally add that for 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 uh, uh, for coronary alignment or commissure alignment, uh, one can be easily achieved for using this uh, method. What we uh, call it as two o'clock. The mnemonic called two o'clock, which means uh, two o'clock, two on the outer curvature. Which means if you have, you can see these commissural tabs. There are three tabs. In, in, the, in the coplanar view, if you have two commissional tabs facing the outer curvature, which we call as two o'clock, two on the outer curvature, then do a clockwise rotation. Two o'clock clockwise rotation, you will get all the three tabs, and all the three tabs will be separate. So once you have, you can do a commissional alignment at the initial stages, we would not recommend, but I think if you're more, more doing more cases, probably you can achieve commissional alignment uh, in this uh, valve. So once you release the first upper crown, then you need to do an angio to check that the valve is in proper position. Again, the pigtail is in proper position. You can see the valve is not moved and you can see the marker just at the analyst and also see the upper crown, whether it is above the leaflets. So you can see the aortic leaf, calcified leaflets. You can see the upper crown above the leaflets. As I told you, this uh, upper crown will help to keep the leaflets in position and avoid uh, passing a, a coronary obstruction. So. In fact, uh, this is the, this valve is recommended for even a coronary height up to eight millimeters because of this uh, uh, this technology. So the operator, first operator should maintain that uh, tension and uh, should not uh, leave it loose or should not push it uh, too much. If you push it too much, it can go into the ventricle. If you push it, uh, if you leave it loose, it can come into the iota and cause pop out. So the first operator is important to maintain that uh, tension. And uh, once you are satisfied, then you can release the knob one completely. And you can see that once you release the knob one, both the, the stabilization arches are completely released and you can see the release of the upper stabilization arches. So at this stage, if you think uh, if the valve is uh, 
uh, too high, we can uh, slightly push it, or the valve is too uh, low, we can slightly maneuver it a little bit. But again, uh, it's uh, important to do this uh, prior to the release of the uh, stabilization arches. So this is, a, uh, you can see that this is the valve is in proper position, the stabilization arch is released. This is, this is the neutral tension, uh, which the first operator is, is very, very important for the first operator to maintain the tension. Well, if the first operator is pushing too much, you can see that it's, it's you can see the tension in the outer curve uh, compared to the normal tension. Or if the first operator is not giving enough pressure, you can see it's loose and back. In this case, if the valve can pop out, and if you push too much, it can embolize into the ventricle. So it's important the first operator maintains that tension throughout the procedure. And uh, once uh, that is done, then we are ready for the final release. That's the second uh, knob. The second operator will have to quickly release the second knob. But very, very important, the first operator should maintain the tension. And even for taking out the pigtail, the first operator should not take his hand out. The second operator should remove the pigtail before we do the final release. You can see the pigtail being removed. And then the second operator removes the safety button and releases the knob 2 very quickly. You have to knob 2 should be released very quickly without stopping and small fast movements. And uh, this uh, mostly it is not done uh, uh, pacing. It's done without pacing. But in patients uh, who have uh, uh, anatomy where you have a risk of pop out is higher like calcium bicuspid valve, or you have irregular heartbeats and all that, it's, uh, it's ideal to use a, a, a pacing uh, and have a stable deployment. So this is the final deployment. Once the final deployment is done, again, the removal, it's important to, uh, again, centralize the nose cone. It is similar to what we do with the uh, Evolute, where you can pull the wire and centralize. Sometimes you may not be able to achieve that. Uh, you might have to use uh, some other techniques, but then you, it's very important to centralize the nose cone, remove it, and then to push the wire back. In very important and accurate new valve to make sure the wire axis is uh, not lost. Uh, because once you the wire is uh, lost, then it's very difficult to wire exactly to the center. We can't do it, but of course, you have to do the pigtail and making sure we are well within the valve using multiple uh, co-views. But uh, uh, after we remove the valve, we maintain the wire position to decide whether further post dilatation is required. One point to notice, uh, during the valve release, the stent holder, what you see a black color, you can see the valve holder moving forward. So this is the, you can see in this image, during the release, the stent, this is the black uh, called stent holder, which will move forward. That's why I was telling that the wire should be in the mid cavity. Otherwise, uh, the wire is too, uh, in the LBOT, too much LBOT can help, uh, we can pass pop out. So the, you can see the stent holder moving down. If it doesn't move down, that means it's not fully released. And then one needs to make sure that the knob 2 is again fully open and make sure the valve is uh, fully released uh, before we pull the nose cone out. Otherwise, we can uh, cause a pop, uh, pop out. So once uh, uh, the, making sure that uh, the stent holder is fully detached, uh, the system and the, the nose cone is centralized and removed. And then the system removal is very simple. Just the opposite what we did, start with knob 2 and opposite uh, rotation. And the same, again, followed by knob, knob 1 rotation on the opposite side will get, the, get the, uh, the, the delivery system in uh, uh, in order and we can remove the delivery system. So do an iatogram, make sure the pigtail is kept above the stabilization arches, control the pigtail position, and uh, making sure the wire is inside, do an iatogram, and uh, then assess for uh, any parallel leak. If balloon post dilatation is required, we use the same balloon as a pre dilatation balloon. So we don't want to increase the size of the balloon. Generally, uh, it should be less than one millimeter than the size of the Valve, valve size, and then uh, it's important to make sure the mass, proximal marker is kept at the at the at the commercial uh, tabs level, so that uh, we don't go very high. We only need dilatation of the stent and not higher. So the one must be positioned properly, and uh, the wire so making sure the wire is the position is not lost, and give a good post dilatation. So I think that the user, it is a quite a simple technique to uh, to use this valve, and uh, we can have uh, great results. The, one of the big advantages I see, uh, the valve has got uh, excellent uh, uh, access to coronaries. The supra and have have better hemodynamics. I would say the advantage of uh, uh, the the advantage of other self-expanding like like Evolute, we have a supra and for better hemodynamics. The advantage of uh, balloon expandable valves, uh, where we have coronary access, is also there. So we have uh, both advantages of both these valves uh, in this accurate new valve. And this is one of, one of our cases. Uh, we have done four cases now, and, and this is uh, one of our cases where uh, 
you can see the CT, this is the tricuspid valve and uh, the perimeter 63 and the perimeter direct diameter is 20.1 as i informed you it is important to base our sizing based on the perimeter so 20 millimeter so we need a small size valve and uh, for balloon we have to use one millimeter less uh, here so i did a, a 19 millimeter uh, we, we don't have 19 or can use 18 or even a 20 millimeter balloon uh, in these uh, patients for pre-dilatation the coronary heights uh, are quite uh, good here uh, then uh, the lc height is 12 and the rc height is 15 good adequate sinuses so uh, here we decide to use a small size uh, accurate neo two along with the here you don't see much of calcium in the annulus and the lvot the the, the, the iota angle is favorable even the the iliacs and the femorals are quite favorable quite large and uh, again it's up to five millimeters we can use this uh, valve with the eye sheet uh, we can do other di the femoral diameters of uh, iliac femoral diameters up to five millimeters so even a smaller we have done, but uh, I think we need to be careful. So uh, this is again a pre-dilatation, making sure the center of the balloon adequately sized is a 20 millimeter balloon. We use a 20 millimeter balloon. There is not much of calcium, so we're not very much concerned using a slightly larger balloon. And then the valve is positioned. And uh, you can see that we have put the foot tail is a non contact sinus. We have kept the marker, the delivery catheter marker, uh, the lower border at the pigtail, uh, like that level of the analyst. And making sure we also, you can see that uh, we are trying to slightly rotate it because uh, to achieve a coronary alignment, uh, commissure alignment, you can see this again, this view, there are two commissure tabs on the on the on the outer curvature. So this is followed by the release of the first knob one, and you can see the outer, the, the, the upper crowns released here. And this is again, the further uh, movement of the knob one, you can see that the uh, uh, stabilization arches are released, you can see that calcium, little bit of calcium below the crown, which means we are in good position. And we can also see the marker at the level of the analyst. So it's a good position. And now uh, making sure that we maintain the tension and the final movement is always a forward movement. And you can, you can see now that we are releasing the second, you can see that second adopter, that Mr. Knob 2 is released. And uh, this, uh, the, you can see here that uh, the stent holder didn't move much. So we are making sure that the, the stent holder is completely released the stent before we centralize and remove the delivery system. And you can see the, the wire coming up, and then you push the wire back, maintaining the wire axis. And then we assess for the iotogram whether we need to do a post dilatation. And you can see that this patient has an excellent result. There is no parallel leak, and the gradients were in single digit. And here, there is no need for any post dilatation. So this patient had a great result. So in this patient, we also we showed how easy and how nice we can do a coronary engagement. This was bilateral engagement of both the left and the right coronary, uh, where we can see that both are easily accessible and uh, can engage it and get a good access for this 66-year-old uh, lady. Thank you very much for patient listening. Well, I, th I, I don't think I'm qualified to comment on this valve because I've never used it in my life. Um, is anyone in the audience used this valve? Yes, Peter, uh, please make your comments. So um, uh, we have used this valve quite a few times. And uh, I think that the uh, smart people can learn from their own mistakes, but the even smarter can learn from the mistakes of the others. So please listen to our problem. So the first is the, the pre-dilating balloon size selection. So it is suggested by the company uh, that you should size a balloon which is the same size of the uh, perimeter derived diameter. But uh, it's too large uh, because we ruptured an annulus once when we sized, so we used that oversized balloon. So I would warn you. So I think that we should still use the uh, minimum diameter uh, to select our pre-dilating balloon. This is number one. And the second is what was mentioned clearly that when you implant this valve, please make sure that you don't lose your wire from the LV. Uh, because if you have to post-dilate the valve, it is very difficult to properly rewire this valve. Because I don't know whether you notice that the upper like uh, struts are too large. So even the head of the pigtail can get through very easily. And it's very, very, very difficult to notice where your wire got through. And if it has got through the strut, it's very easy to push down the new balloon, do the, the post-dilatation, 
and you are unable to pull out the uh, used balloon from the valve. So it can cause a lot of problems. These are my two comments. Thank you very much. So uh, I think pre-dilatation is mandatory. Every single case has yes. to be pre-dilated. Yes, because the yes. radial force of this valve is not that strong. So the pre-dilatation is mandatory, but please be very careful with the balloon size selection. Uh, uh, the, uh, so uh, because of the not that good radial force, the company suggests us to use a larger balloon. But the radial force is a bit better than that. So we can afford using a smaller balloon and to be on the safe side. So would it be a choice every time if you have a low coronary, say four millimeter, five millimeter left main? Would you want to like, because this has a crown which suppresses, which catches the native valve. So will it become a choice of valve in that scenario? Uh, yes, the, com the company recommends up to eight millimeters for our heads, we can use it, yes. Agree. 